folks. Paul Carlson here with Safety Solutions Academy. I uh, wanted to take some time to throw together uh, my first YouTube video today. So I just put some things together out in the shop for a little project I need to take care of. And I thought I would uh, include you in that project. Nothing uh, really crazy today, just something pretty simple. I don't know about you, but in all the things that I do, I have a tendency to use quite a bit of paracord. Um, whether it's the real stuff or you know just some nylon paracord, this is 550 Type 3 commercial. Um, and it's made supposedly by a government contractor. But when we take a look at the core, we'll see that it's probably not quite uh, the real thing. But whenever I use this paracord, I have to make sure that it's easy for me to get to. And so today I'm going to make a little container that makes it easy for me to dispense this paracord. You know, when you open up these packages of paracord, and this happens to be a 100-foot package, um, oftentimes you find that these coils just turn into a mess and it makes it even harder to deal with the project that you're dealing with than it would be uh, if the paracord was easy to get out and use. So today we're going to uh, make a little project to make that a little bit simpler. Let's take a look at what we've got out here on the bench. First of all, I've got my container that I'm gonna use. This happens to be a nice organic harvest medley rice container. We find these at Costco. It's got a nice plastic lid, clear plastic container. Um, it really isn't terribly important what kind of container it is that you have. This just happens to be something I had laying around. My wife was kind enough to put it aside when she finished it. Knowing me, if I would have finished it, I probably just would have put it back in the cupboard like this. But uh, she brought it out, put it underneath my workbench so that I had it ready to use for a project when I needed it. Again, uh, I've got 100 foot of paracord. I've got a cigarette lighter, just an old washer. You can see this is a fender washer that got smashed and something's bent. It's been sitting in my scrap uh, box for quite some time. And so we'll use that to, for part of the project. I happen to have a razor knife, but any good sharp cutting tool will do. And then uh, my handy dandy drill. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we need to do is we need to take this paracord out of its package and do what's called stacking it. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. And the key to being able to use any kind of uh, rope is to have it in what's called a nice neat stack. As you folks know, if you listen to the podcast, uh, I spent a lot of time in the mountains climbing, and that means that I spent a lot of time dealing with ropes. And so what I'm going to do right now, and I'll just start this out, and then I'll probably cut the video off. You don't need to watch me do this. I'm going to take this paracord, and I'm going to put it into a nice, neat pile here on the bench. Now I'm going to move my loose end away, and then we're just going to go ahead and loosely stack this up, get all the tangles out. Once it's in a stack, it's much easier to deal with. If I was going to use a hundred foot of paracord right now, I wouldn't need to put it into a container. I could just leave it here in this stack, nice and neat, but uh, I'm not going to use a hundred foot. I might need six foot tomorrow and 12 foot the next day and a foot and a half the day after that. So I want to put it into a dispenser that's going to hold it neatly so that I'm not going to have to worry about how it is I handle it each and every time that I take it out. I'm going to go ahead and finish the stacking process here, and then I'll be back to talk to you in a minute about the next step. I'm just about down to the end of my 100 foot coil and things are going pretty well. Notice that uh, I'm trying to take off just one loop at a time and make sure that I keep them nice and neat. If you do that all the way through, you're not going to have a problem. And again, if you were going to use all 100 foot, it wouldn't be much of an issue. Just carefully uncoil it, put it into a nice stack, and you would be all set, ready to go. But since we're going to use a bit at a time, we want to have a container that will keep it nice and neat from one use to the next. So here we're down to the very end of our stack. And now we have two ends of our cord. The first end here, this is the uh, top end of our stack. And then remember this end that I set aside back at the beginning. This is the end for the bottom of our stack. What we want to do is we want to get these ends nice and neatly dressed up so we can put them away and not have to worry about fraying. If you look at the cord, you'll see that there is an inner core and then an outer sheath. Now most of the strength comes from the inner core and the outer sheath provides protection for that inner strong core. What we're going to do to make sure that this doesn't fray is we're going to simply pull that inner core out of the sheath, you know, about an inch and a half, two inches. And then I'm going to use my razor knife to 
go ahead and cut that off. So you can see that I completely severed the core. We'll get rid of that. And I'm simply going to take the kern mantle, or the kern, and we're going to slide it back out, this outer sheath over the top. And I can feel inside that the core ends right about back here, but I've got all this extra up in front. I'm going to use the lighter to just get that end hot. And if you're careful, and you need to be careful, you can smash that nylon back together. Now there's no way that that end's going to fray. This again is my top end. I'm going to set it aside, and I'm going to do the same with the bottom end of my stack. This is something that I do each and every time that I cut cord away from my stack as I redress that end, and that makes sure that I don't end up wasting any cord through fraying. So again, pull out inch and a half, two inches. Go ahead and use whatever cutting tool you have to take off that inner core. Got to make sure you get it all cut. Scissors would work just fine or a sharp pocket knife. My razor knife is a little bit rusty as you can see which doesn't help to make it cut much better but we'll survive. And again we push that mantle or the outer sheath over the top and then use the lighter to melt that sheath together. Another trick that you can use if you don't want to touch that bubbling hot plastic is just press it down with the end of your lighter on top of some kind of a hard surface and you can see that that gives me a, a good seal on the end as well. So that being the bottom of my stack, I'm going to go ahead and move it over here to the side. Now, what we want to do is we want to put this into the container, but I want it to be able to stay in the container. I've got the old washer. I'm going to go ahead and I'm simply going to slide the uh, cord through that washer and then I'm simply going to tie an overhand on a bite, just an overhand knot, tuck the washer through, and now I've got a stop that will keep my end from coming out of my container. Next step is I'm simply going to open up the container and I'm going to stack the rope again. Now I tied my washer onto the top end, the top of my stack. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm simply going to feed this cord down into this container. So what I'm doing is I'm unstacking my line again from the top to the bottom. And we're going to slide all 100 foot into this container in a nice neat stack and then we'll be ready for our next step. We're getting close now to the uh, end of our stack. Now we've got the washer that's on the bottom of the stack that's going to keep our line in our container. And here we come up to the top end of our stack. Used to be the bottom, now it's the top. There it is right there. Time for the next step. Here's the fun part if you like power tools. You'll see in the top of this container there's a little dimple right in the center. I'm going to take my drill and I'm simply going to very casually drill a hole right through the center of that container. That hole is where I'm going to slide my cord and that's going to be the dispenser. Now you'll notice the hole is a little bit smaller probably than the diameter of the cord itself. And you'll notice that when I smash this down with the lighter, I kind of made a big mess there. That may help us or it may hinder us. We may have to rework that. I'm simply going to start off by trying to wiggle some of that plastic through the hole and if I can get a hold of it on the other side, we'll be home free. So far, not so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the lighter and I'm going to reheat this tip. Get it soft and I'm going to just quickly and simply roll it between my fingers. And now you'll see that I've got a little bit more 
to work with there. We'll slide it up through that hole, see if that piece holds, and what do you know? Slid right through. I can take that lid now, put it right down on the top of my container, screw it in, and what I've got is I've got a pretty easy to use dispenser for paracord. To make sure that I don't lose my end down inside, go ahead and just tie an overhand knot. Anytime I need to, I can open up the lid, pull it down to the knot, screw the lid back in, and I've got this container that's ready to go. Now when I need to dispense cord, all I need to do is pull out the length that I need. It's gonna come out tangle free, and I'm gonna be able to use the cord for whatever I need to use it for. If I pull out too much, all I need to do is, again, unscrew that lid and restack whatever I need to put back in, back into the container. Now, it takes a little bit of time to create this project up front. It probably took me about 10 minutes to put together this little kit. Of course, I had to have the container to do it. There's no reason why you couldn't use a peanut butter jar. There's no reason why a glass ball jar wouldn't work as well. Um, I happen to like the plastic. It's cheap, as in free, left over from things that I use, and it works out pretty well. Again, it does take some time up front to do this project, but the whole reason that I take that time to get this project ready to go is so that when I have a project where I need the cord, I don't have to spend time during that project trying to untangle that rat's nest that we often get when we use paracord. So next time you're thinking about uh, getting some paracord, whether you get a 100-yard roll, I think pretty easily a 300-yard roll would fit inside this container. A 500 might be a tight squeeze, but if that's the case, maybe you get an old coffee can, punch a hole in the lid of the coffee can and run the same type of project as we've got right here. You'll have that cord coming out quickly and easily, and hopefully it'll make things a little bit better for you. Please make sure you swing by the Safety Solutions Academy website. You'll find us at www.safetysolutionsacademy.com. When you're on the site, make sure you check out our resources, take a look at our course schedule, sign up for a class, and comment on the blog. I hope that you uh, found today's tip helpful. Now, if you have ideas for other videos you'd like to see me do, just shoot an email to paul at safetysolutionsacademy.com. I'd love to hear from you. Also, make sure you catch up with us on Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, we're Safety Solutions Academy, and on Twitter, you can find me at paul underscore SSA. Head on over to iTunes and get yourself subscribed to our podcast. Again, we're Safety Solutions Academy. All these links are on our website. Hope you have a great day.